Welcome. Okay, Rabbi Kaplan. Thank Good you morning, for Zelda. How are you? I'm fine. Baruch Hashem. Good. Okay. All right. So, Moses' words in Nitzavim, a prelude to Rosh Hashanah. And Moses said, all of you, why did he add your heads, your tribes, your elders, your officers, every man, and your infants? Now, this is uh, Parshat Nitzavim, which records the end of Moshe's third farewell discourse to his beloved nation. Can you tell us a little bit about this farewell and what he had in mind when he said it? Uh, with greatest of pleasure, Zelda. Let me begin by sharing with all of our listeners that before Moshe Rabbeinu's terrestrial passing, he delivered three major sermons, and those comprise the fifth book of the Torah, which is called Sefer Dvarim, the book of Deuteronomy. In essence, the fifth book of the Torah is referred to our sages as Mishnah Torah, which means the repetition of Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu restated uh, virtually all of the mitzvot, adding some details that had not previously been recorded. We believe that Moshe Rabbeinu during these final weeks of his life was so close to Hashem that Shechina Medaberet Betoch Grono, which means that the Divine Presence itself occupied his larynx or his voice box. And this was literally God speaking to the people, the highest level of prophecy. And it's considered to be actual scripture. So Moshe Rabbeinu begins this farewell speech or speeches, a series of, of, of addresses on Rosh Chodesh Shvat, which is precisely five weeks before his terrestrial passing, Moshe Rabbeinu passes on Shabbat Kodesh, the seventh day of Adar. Before Moshe Rabbeinu passes, he does a number of very important things, the goal of which is to ensure continuity to empower, to uplift, to inspire, and to transform the Jewish people into a nation that can stand the test of time, can overcome the challenges that they will face, and ultimately perform their mission with verve, devotion, dedication, and grace until such time as Mashiach comes and Moshe Rabbeinu is reunited with us. Our sages tell us that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted a new generation, a generation that would enter the land of Israel, but by and large did not actually experience the Exodus, to hear the words of Torah from a trusted source, from Moshe Rabbeinu himself. And before Moshe Rabbeinu passes, he enters us into a covenant with God. And this covenant is one that will bind us, bind us in love and devotion to Hashem. It is one that ensures we understand that there will be consequences for everything we do. For the lives we live, Zelda, are necessarily consequential. The choices we make make a big difference. We matter. Our lives matter. The people around us matter. The world matters. It is the polar opposite of nihilism, uh, thinking that nothing makes a difference, or the ridiculous idea of YOLO, hashtag YOLO, that's how they say it today. But this is really an, an ancient idea. It's uh, Epicurean, I think, in nature, or perhaps even goes, uh, predates Epicure. And it is eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy, for tomorrow you may die. In other words, that life should not be seen as a prelude to an afterlife or to, uh, 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 if you will, an experience that leads us into a higher form of eternity. No, no, no. They, they say life is what it is. It's just a collection of fun and games, moments of sensual libido and pleasure. We reject this entirely, Zelda. Judaism believes that life is the greatest gift and that each and every one of us must live life as meaningfully as he or she can. And that's not as we like to think, patting ourselves on the back and uh, giving ourselves a pass. That's on, according to God's expectations of us. Far more than what most of us 
will let on to, far more than what most of us like to admit to. We are quite capable, and we have been given the ability to do amazing things. But we oftentimes seek out the path of least resistance. This is who we are by nature. We're slothful, lazy, uh, unwilling to work harder than we have to. This is our nature, and our nature was created by God for us to overcome it. So Moshe Rabbeinu... Can I ask, can I'm can not, I ask a question when you finish? When you, when I, I'm going to try to bring this to a close. So yeah. Moshe Rabbeinu enters us into this covenant, Zelda. And not only does he tell us that there are consequences and that our lives are consequential, but he emphasizes that we are responsible for each other. You're not just responsible for your actions and your choices. You and I bear responsibility for the spiritual and material welfare of others. And that we are supposed to engage in a lifelong pursuit of holiness that is fueled by love and devotion to God. And Zelda, this is something that applies to all of us. By ignoring the differences, by glossing over the uniqueness of individuals, some great and some not, we leave a piece of ourselves off the table or away from the conversation. Because, you know, it's, it's all-encompassing, and sometimes all-encompassing means that I don't have to serve God in a manner that I uniquely can and for who I am. So Moshe Rabbeinu mentions 10 different classes, speaking about a range of potential and possibility and responsibility, telling us that each of us is equally and uniquely responsible for the kinds of ideas represented by this covenant that he entered us into. So that's a, a snapshot, Zelda, and, and in response to your question. Okay, do you think that Hashem uh, was hard on the Jewish people and especially on Moses because, I mean, Moses was everything and did everything that Hashem wanted, that God wanted. Uh, the people, in you know, on the other hand, did not. So do you think that God was um, sensitive, enough, sensitive or, you know, gave us as much as we could and then just said, you know, the hell with you? If you don't, if you don't, uh, you know, do what we're su you're supposed to do, then just, you know, walk alone. <laughs> I think you know the answer to that question, Zelda. <laughs> I do, but I'd like it to be. Uh, to um, um, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not going to repeat uh, what what you actually said because I, I, I don't think you agree with it either. You, you don't even entertain that possibility. God loves us, Zelda. He loves us. He cares about us. He wants what's best for us. When he challenges us, it's because we aren't challenging ourselves enough and we aren't meeting our potential. And I say that on faith, not on knowledge or understanding. I do not claim to have any better understanding of how and why God does what he does than anybody else. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not clairvoyant. I don't have Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, or higher consciousness. I can't see any more than anybody else can see. But Zelda, I do live with absolute perfect faith, at least I try to, that Hashem knows what is best for us. And even when we cry out and ask God to please give us a break, and, and oftentimes that's necessary. It's necessary for us to cry out and Hashem does give us a break. At the end of the day, Hashem gives us what is best for us because He wants us to be successful. And if there's any truth to that hashtag YOLO business, it is you only live once. You're only able to make the most of life once. We, we are all unique. We've never been here before per se. Whilst our souls are connected to other souls and previous lifetimes and happenings, that could perhaps best be imagined in the image of a, a line, mathematically speaking, is comprised of many dots. And we are all, all a unique cell within that long line of souls. So Zelda, I've never been here. You've never been here. This is the opportunity we have to rise and shine. This is the opportunity that God gives us to make the most of life, to make our contribution into a universe that will someday soon reach its perfection. 
and sometimes okay. we aren't trying hard enough, so God challenges us. Okay, so I'm always going back to the same thing because it never seems to leave me in my soul thoughts. And I, I'm talking about the Holocaust and the fact that God in so many times and cases has been there to help us through and when, you know, we continue to do the wrong thing, he says, you know, pick up your, your bundle and, and carry it on your own. But I can't get past the six million that, that died. And I blame not only the rest of the world, who the United States, they knew about it, they did nothing, and our own Jews did nothing about it. So I believe in God. I pray to God. I apologize more than anything to God. But I can't get past, and I can't be like you, that I can say, okay, it happened, and there had to be a reason. I, I, I can't. So I'm sure other people out there feel exactly the same way as I do. So give us a possibility of why or how to deal with this. Again, Zelda, I hear you've touched on about at least five things in my last count. That's me. Okay. Uh, that's Take fine. whichever one you want. Well, which one would you like me to respond to? I want to know why. You want now. to know why. I want to tell I you that the desire to know why people suffer is terrible. Why would you want to know why somebody suffers? Why wouldn't you how want, why it. would you? How to stop it. How to stop it? <laughs> well, Zelda, we can take responsibility for ourselves. We are supposed to take responsibility for those around us. And the first thing that we can all do is be honest, be honest, with ourselves and be honest with the world around us. We are not prepared to stand up to evil. We are not prepared to call it out. It's politically incorrect. It's not accepted by the vast majority of the population. So we go along to get along all the time. That's, that's the fact, Zelda. We don't call out the terrorists. It's easy to condemn the Nazis of seven decades ago, but for some reason people find it virtually impossible to condemn the Nazis of today. The Nazi is not evil because of the number six million or the more accurate number, which is closer to 11 million. And I mentioned this multiple times on the show, but that's not what makes the Nazi a Nazi. The Nazi is a horrific monster, an excuse for a human being because he or she chose to murder with impunity and cruelty because he or she in his arrogance and his quest for my civilization or my goodness or my prosperity, uber alles, allows them to murder, to torture, to maim, and to horrifically abuse others. And this is going on in our world today. And yet, instead, we are so quick to condemn the evil of yesterday, which doesn't obligate us, because everybody condemns that evil, and unwilling to condemn that evil today. So I don't, I don't believe that people really want to stop anything. I think that people are, for the most part, concerned with their own selves. People are selfish. Who are we fooling? And we have to try to transcend that selfishness a little bit. And it's selfish to want to understand why other people suffer. And it's wrong. We should never want to understand it. Let me tell you something, Zelda. You, you indicated or insinuated that I'm ready to get over the six million. Now, I'm just going to protest with every fiber of my being. You said you can't be like me to get over it. I don't get over anything. I live with a sense of mission and duty towards the millions of my brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, parents, and grandparents who were murdered. I live with that spirit. And that fuels me to work harder to bring Mashiach and to make our world a good place today. I never want to get over and I never want to understand suffering. Why would I want to understand it? If I could understand suffering, I'd be less human. We should never want to understand it. We should want Mashiach to come. We should crave and yearn for an end to the present reality and for the ushering in of a new world order. And Mashiach will come, Zelda, b'mehera o b'yameinu, speedily and in our days. And when we study Torah and when we perform mitzvot and when we live with a greater sense of duty 
towards God and others, we accelerate that process of redemption. And it's actually as simple as that. All right. The thing is that we are now coming into our Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Why is it that we have in so many cases, in so many ways, stayed the course, that we have furthered our Judaism, that we haven't left it behind in most cases, and we continue to celebrate uh, these, these special times? Uh, and and I think that many people say, you know, it's enough. We we heard that, done that, and yet we don't give up, and we never will. Well, the the answer, Zelda, is because we have an ashama. We have a piece of God that won't let us do that, and that's a blessing. It's the greatest gift that any of us could possibly have. We are uniquely linked and connected to the creator of the universe in ways that we can't understand and in ways that we can't fathom. And it doesn't allow us to sleep comfortably. Sometimes it expresses itself as Jewish guilt. All the time it expresses itself as a a sense of restlessness. And I I think that the, the greatest challenge we have is to harness that sentiment and to translate it into concrete action. As, a, as a, we, our, our, our Torah puts it, that um, I must grasp it and not weaken my hold on it. So I have found, I have found the love of my soul. This is a reference to the innate love that we all feel, the connection that we all feel to God. And the challenge for us is to grasp it not to let go of it. And as the Alter Rebbe says on the Kutat Torah, in his famous Mimer, the famous Hasidic discourses that introduces the idea of Melech Besada, the king in the field, he says that we actualize this inspiration, these feelings, by mouthing words of Torah, by engaging in acts of loving kindness, piety, and spiritual dedication and devotion. And sometimes, Zelda, people don't feel like doing it. Sometimes we're not feeling inspired or uplifted. And people say, what should I do? And the answer is, just do it. Like the wise men of Nike say, just do it. Because since there is an inherent connection and bond within the core of every one of us, if we just do it, it enables that energy, that light to flow. And when it flows, Zelda, once it's flowing, you can uh, intensify and increase its volume and its, its power and its force. And this is, uh, if you will, a commentary on life. Do good things. Tap into the reservoir of holiness. That is you. Realize that Hashem, Almighty God, has implanted tremendous potential for greatness within you and make it happen. So what do you think it is about the Jewish people, in most cases, that they have this strong and, you know, never-ending commitment to Hashem and to the Jewish faith? I mean, uh, you know, after all of these years, after everything we've been through, you would assume that some people would say, let it go, I've had enough. I'm just going to, you know, live day to day. And yet we, as the Jewish people, are stronger and more successful than ever before in such small numbers. 20 questions. You can answer however you want. Well, not only it's 20 questions, it sounds to me like the same question in 20 different ways. (laughs) And, and, And I don't have a different answer. The answer in a word is neshama. The answer in a word is the unique soul that Almighty God has given us, Zelda. And we have to utilize it. It's, it's tremendous potential. The question is whether we utilize and develop it. We have what it takes. Will we just allow it to rouse us from our slumber and basically um, you know, be a nuisance, not allow us to sleep peacefully? Or will we heed its call and follow its inspiration. 
Will you be all you can be or will you just be annoyed? And only you and I have the answer to that question for ourselves and you and I are responsible on doing the best we can do and trying to get others to follow suit. Well, I don't know whether it's part and parcel of how you were raised. Uh, I mean, your your family has gone through hell and back and, and you've, you know, r risen above it and, and become far better than ever before. Uh, you've been there and you've felt the pain that your relatives have gone through. Many of us uh, have not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you, Zelda, and tell you that I, I don't think that uh, far better than ever before. I, I stand in awe of my ancestors. I know a great deal about my great-grandparents on all sides. And I, I feel that they were far better people than I could ever hope to be. I actually, I actually think about s this sometimes, and, and Mashiach will come. And I will have the privilege of meeting my ancestors, my, my great-grandparents. I only knew one of the sets of great-grandparents. And I wonder if, if they'll be proud or not as proud as, as I'd like them to be. I wonder if, 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 I, if I will do them uh, uh, the pride that, and the nachas that they rightly deserve. And I don't know the answer to that question. And, and, and I'm not just saying this, Zelda. I, I really and truly don't know. I don't know if I, if I, if I measure up. I, I think Hashem has given me uh, certain talents and certain abilities. I don't know if I'm utilizing them fully. And, and I, I, I believe that I could do far more and be a far more sensitive, more compassionate, more righteous, more erudite and, and um, an effective individual. And, and I, I hope that I will become those things, Zelda. I'm going to keep trying. This, this, this I, 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 I will say. I believe that will keep trying. I will keep trying to overcome my shortcomings. I will keep trying to be a little stronger, a little better, and hopefully Hashem will shine His light upon me and all of us, and that we will rise to the occasion and, and, and be the people we can be. To, know, to say that we are far better than ancestors, I, I certainly cannot say that with any sense of integrity, Zelda. I don't think anybody made reference to anybody better than anyone else. It's just that some were deemed to go through this horrendous Holocaust and uh, a continual, I, I don't want to say hatred of the Jews, I want to say misunderstanding, that's too, too mild a word to, to share. Um, Why are you afraid to you know, call it as it is? There is a lot of hatred out there. It's a terrible thing. If, if you ignore it, or if you minimize it, or you underplay it, you do no one a favor. That's actually a disservice. However, if we focus on hatred and negativity, then we have lost the opportunity to live as well as we can. You know, the Rebbe didn't speak about negativity at all. It was almost like he was allergic to negativity. The Rebbe would say Kaddish on the second day of Rosh Hashanah for the Rebetzin's younger sister, Rebetzin Shena, who was murdered with her husband, uh, Rav Menachem Mendel HaKoyen Harnestein. They were, they were gassed in Treblinka on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. And, and the Rebbe would say Kaddish for them. The Rebbe himself was engaged in the research to find out exactly when their, their yard site was. And in Treblinka, there was no work camp. They simply, the transports came from Warsaw and they were sent straight to the gas chambers. And despite the fact that the Rebbe lived with this knowledge, knowing that his, his uh, that the Rebetzin's family was gassed, that his brother, uh, Doivbe, was gassed by the Nazis, that, that, um, that his family had suffered so much, he never mentioned negativity. The Rebbe always spoke in positive, glowing terms. And he tried to uplift and inspire everybody he met, Jew and non-Jew alike. The Rebbe didn't talk about people's ugliness and hatred. The Rebbe didn't denigrate. The Rebbe talked about our potential. He constantly emphasized the teaching of our sages that Rosh Hashanah commemorates the birth of humanity. And humanity, in Torah language, is Odom. And an Odom is a euphemism for the word Adame, which means in the image of. God has implanted within each of us the potential and the possibility to be godlike. And how is one godlike? How is 
one to emulate the Creator? Our sages ask this very question, especially because it's a mitzvah in the Torah, to be godlike, lehidamishlei. And the answer is to look at Torah and see how Torah describes God's activities. God clothes the naked. God feeds the hungry. God visited the sick and offered bereavement for those who are in mourning. You and I can do those things. And when we live with a sense of compassion and sensitivity for others, and when we look at others and see their, their best qualities rather than point out their shortcomings or their, or their negativity or ugliness, and we all have it, but if you choose to look at people in a positive way, then you will be able to uplift and inspire them. And the more it's about making others who they can be and trying to be who you can be, the closer our world comes to being the goodly and godly place it was always destined to become. And it will happen, Zelda, very, very soon and in our days. This is the fundamental cornerstone of Jewish faith that the world was created by God to be a beautiful garden, to be a wonderful place. And that's how it's going to be when Mashiach comes. It'll be a place where we will no longer have to live with, with uh, darkness or obfuscation, with confusion, with God's presence being camouflaged. It'll, it'll be a word where everything becomes transparent. We, we will see in an overt and obvious way the presence of the Creator and where we no longer will have to deal with difficulties and challenges, instead of, of, of uh, battling darkness when Mashiach comes, we will be able to go Michael El Choyl from strength to strength and from, and from um, plateau to plateau, from height to height in our continued relationship and knowledge of God. I hope and pray, Zelda, that that day comes upon us very, very speedily and in our time, Amen. And I want to tell you that the only way we can accelerate that process is by emphasizing the positive and trying to do more each day. Well, you have such a positive outlook, which you share with members of your congregation, your friends, all of us here at the radio, and, you know, your family members. But this is your job. This is what you were destined to be, a positive you know, light to to the nation. That's the truth. And hopefully I can add whatever I can by having people like yourself and others who say the same thing. But a lot of people are negative and are not going to do anything to move forward. So you keep saying Mashiach is coming. I cannot wait, but how long is it going to take? I, I, okay, I, again, there's a lot. You said a lot of things. Um, I, I'll, I'll respond to your last thing. I don't know how long it's going to take, Zelda. I, I, I thought Mashiach would have been here a very long time ago. Um, I am merely echoing the sentiment and the, the calling that I heard from the Rebbe. The Rebbe said Mashiach is coming. He told us that he felt it and he saw it and he knew it. And, and it will be. It will be. And it's going to happen, Zelda, in the blink of an eye. And it's going to happen very soon, Amir Tzashem. Uh, as, as, as to your kind words, uh, the truth is that I'm, 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 I'm not really so naturally disposed to being uplifting and positive. I, 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 am, I try to be this way. And, and if I am at whatever level I, I am successful at it, I have to tell you um, God's honest truth that it's, it's not due to who I am. It's due to the privilege that I had to grow up at the, at the feet of the Rebbe and, and, and to be in the presence of such a giant of humanity and to constantly hear his voice and his message, which was so overwhelmingly positive that uh, I, you know, I try to absorb it and, and include it in, in, in my own playbook, so to speak. And, 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 that's, and that's why and how whatever good about me happened, that's, that's really where the credit is due, Zelda. That is the truth. I'm, I'm telling you that I'm not naturally disposed to be so positive. Um, quite the contrary. And, and if I can do it, anybody can. Um, it, so, so let's not make the mistake of thinking that somebody is great or special and therefore he or she can do the mission that Hashem has placed upon them. Hashem has given each of us the strength that we need to do what we must do and if only we will listen to the voice 
of the Torah true leadership that we were privileged to have in our time, we will be more successful at what we try to do. And all of us can and Be'ezrat Hashem will be the light not only onto our brethren but onto the nations that we're destined to be. Rabbi Kaplan, I think that we're all put here to do certain things for ourselves and for our family and for others. And there are others who cannot, do not know how to, and depend on people like yourself and hopefully me and John and whoever can be of help to each other. So basically, it, it, it seems that it's, it's evenly put out. It's just that I don't think we give each other a lot of credit for all the good we can do for each other on a very small and daily basis by just being kind. I, I couldn't agree more, Zelda. We, we, we can do this. We have been given the ability. Hashem loves us and wants us to make a difference in the lives of others. You know, the more it's about everybody else and the less it's about ourselves, the happier we'll be <laughs> and the more successful we'll be. That is the truth. When, when it becomes about us, then we become snarky and small and, and mean-spirited. We try to put other people down in order to pick ourselves up because we just want to feel good about ourselves. And that's just unfortunate. It's sad. It's a, it's a, it's a tragic loss of the potential that Hashem gave us. Make it about others. Think about others. Ask yourself the question every single day. How can I inspire somebody else? What can I do to make somebody else's life better? And if you live that way, and you try to the best of your ability to, to, to live up to the expectation that Hashem has placed upon us, uh, we will be, Be'ezrat Hashem Zelda, the last generation of Galut, and that first generation who will merit to welcome Mashiach in a beautiful new world that is about to unfold. From your mouth to God's ear, and I'm sure he's listening, I just um, hope that it doesn't take much longer. I, I hope so too. I hope so too, Zelda. And, you know, I, I want to I end our interview with the way it began. You, you, you started by verbalizing the opening words of this week's Torah portion. Atem Nitzavim Hayom, you stand this day. And, and you asked me about it, and I gave some background as to the book of Deuteronomy and what Moses was trying to accomplish in his farewell addresses. It's fascinating to note that Atam Nitzavim Hayom, this, this week's Torah portion, is always read prior to Rosh Hashanah. And according to the teaching of the Magad of Bizrich, as heard from the Baal Shem Tov, that is redacted, and recorded for posterity in the Rebbe's work Hayom Yom, on the Shabbat prior to Rosh Hashanah, although it's the Shabbat before a new month and ultimately a new year, it isn't called Shabbat Mevarchim. It isn't called the Shabbat in which we bless the new month. And that's because Hashem, Almighty God Himself, blesses this upcoming new month, and it's with this power that we, Am Yisrael, the nation of Israel, can bless the other 11 months that will follow. Atem Nitzavim Hayom, Hayom, the day, refers euphemistically to Rosh Hashanah. As it is written, the day came. And the day came, as it's spoken of in the scripture, is a reference to the day of great judgment, to Rosh Hashanah. So Atem Hayom, this really can by extension mean that on Hayom, when we come to Rosh Hashanah, we are Nitzavim, we are standing together, meaning that we will be vindicated in judgment. But Zelda, there's a powerful message there about us being together, shoulder to shoulder, recognizing that each of us has a role to play, and on some level, none is more or less important. The Alter Rebbe, in his famous discourse on Parshas Nitzavim, speaks about the idea that whilst in every civilization and society there is importance attributed to every level of a, a functioning society, everybody plays a role, he said the truth is that on a deeper and loftier dimension, it's a circle. 
and no part of the circle is more or less important. We are all part of the circle called Am Yisrael. This is a circle, Zelda, that can become a pipeline of blessing for the whole world if we choose to be who Hashem wants us to be. If we, okay, if Rabbi, we fall I, short, then there's a leak, and I that's not a good thing. Pieces, but we're totally out of time. Thank you so much for your incredible input, as always. And God willing, we uh, hopefully will speak to you tomorrow. With, uh, with the help of Hashem, thank you for the privilege, Zelda. And I end again with a hope and a prayer that very soon we'll be announcing on the airwaves that Mashiach has finally come and that a wonderful new world has arrived for us all. May it be b'mheira or b'ameinu speedily and in our days. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining. Have a beautiful day. <laughs>